This guy has his own show over, over at Nick's Comedy Stop, and he's had it there for a number of years. He always sells out there because he's a, a great comedian, and uh, he's somebody who you people tonight in the audience and at home have the pleasure of seeing. Please, a nice round of applause for Mr. Don Gavin. All right, thank you. All right. Wow. Well. Uh, well, it's nice to be here. I'm in a, uh, I'm in a very good mood. No, I'm not. Uh, actually, no, I, I'm actually a little bit irritated. I, I don't know. It's, uh, today is like errand day for me. I don't know. Uh, I've been getting aggravated in this. I went this afternoon, I went to the dump. And uh, not physically, I mean, I was bringing stuff there. And I, I went to that, and I didn't know, if you live in a town where they don't pick up the trash, uh, you know, they actually closed the dump. It was closed, there was a gate up. The guy in charge, the... Um, the dump general, whatever you call the guy, was there, right? Another guy with the hat, he looks like, you know, with the scrambled eggs on, it looks like Mr. Real scrambled eggs, not that other stuff. And he's there, and he said the dump was closed. And I said, well, I don't know, why would you, you know, close the dump? Are you afraid, uh, you know, someone's going to come in maybe at midnight and trash the place? Is that what it is? And I, and I, said, I don't know, I mean, the whole errand thing, I went, this morning, I went to uh, do some shopping. I'm so worried about the food. Everything is being contaminated, you know, the Jello and Kool-Aid, and not that I've had a you know, whole lot in the past couple of years, but I'm worried about this stuff. And it's not that, they give you a package you can't open, that thing with the hand. You never can get that open. A canned ham, I've never got open. And all in the room, you've never got a. I mean, you actually get the canned ham, you're trying to get the key, get it halfway around, and then it breaks off in your hand. And I don't know if you're supposed to suck the ham out of this space, or, or do you rent the jaws of life? I don't know. But And it's not me. I mean, Coke and Pepsi, now they're making three liter containers. No one has that much of a thirst. I mean, they look like artillery shells. You, know? you put them in the refrigerator, and it has to come out of the refrigerator. I don't know. It's, and the thing is, now medical products, like Excedrin, Tylenol, these things, you know, I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're drinking, you're getting a they keep drinking. Don't go to the medicine cabinet, right? Because that can kill you. I mean, last week, I, I'll give you a medical product. I cut my hand. I don't know if you can see it at home, but it wasn't that bad, so I didn't call you. But I, I cut my hand, and I went to get a Band-Aid. Now, Band-Aids are in these tin containers that if you had two good hands, you might be able to get the thing open. But a lot of times, you cut your hand. That's why you need a Band-Aid, right? And I'm trying to open it up with my teeth, and I chip my tooth. And now I'm pulling down the strip, trying to separate the flaps, and I got a headache, of course, so I went and got the aspirins. And the aspirins, of course, you have to push down on the top, turn the thing all the way around. You know, line up the arrows, and, and you're probably like me, you put the cotton back in to irritate yourself the next time, you know? I said, this is not working out, you know? And it's not me, it's not me, I swear. I mean, this morning I went to, this morning I went to get bacon and eggs. You know, not a big deal. And I went to a convenience store, and then the other guy says, bacon and eggs, they'll be twenty one fifty. I said, oh yeah, that's pretty convenient. Yeah, thank you very much. I had a shitload of extra money. I was wondering where I was going to leave it. You helped out, you know. I don't, grocery shopping, I swear they do it intensely. They line up 300 carriages in a row. They have some idiot weld them together, right? You can never get one out of the group. I never have. I end up pushing the whole 300 around the store. I mean, it looks like you're pushing an iron wagon train. You got to hire scouts for the front. You, know? you don't really have to hire scouts. That was an embellishment. But I think... I think we've all found the one carriage by itself. Yeah, you find one by itself. You and I both know it's a cripple. There's something wrong with it. You know the one? It couldn't keep up with the floor. You know, there's something wrong with it. You know the one? You know the one you bring down the aisle halfway down the aisle? It's like. Either that, you get one that's a mind of its own. You're shopping. We're buying stuff over here now. You know, you keep that camera good. I know you had me, but the thing is, I don't know. Why is it you get one, you know the one that's got the four wheels, they're all locked to the floor. You know the one? You're leaving four black stains, you're grunting along. You can get like a hernia pushing it. So I decide, can you do hernia on TV? Yeah, okay, but I was getting a hernia. And I decided to carry the carriage. Now, I look like an ass, I admit this. And th th you know, this thing weighs like 40 pounds. I have two kids in the carriage. I don't know either kid, and, and I'm moving along. And no, it's, I, it's me, maybe it's me, I don't know what it is, but it's just different aggravations. And I tell you, certain types of people, anybody that's organized, they've been driving me crazy. People, I'll give you an example, anybody with an, uh, an umbrella, that carries an umbrella, is a dork mundo, and I think we all know this. I mean, do you imagine these people in the morning, they get up, yeah, let me see, I'm going out, and I gotta get a weather report, I may need an umbrella. I mean, you're like me, you get up in the morning, you go, I got one shoe, yeah, another shoe, that's it, I need one more. Okay, uh, screw the pants, I haven't got time today, you know, but... I don't know, these people, they drive me crazy. You've seen them on the highway. You're driving, I'll give you an example. Last night I was driving, and it started to get dark. I'm in my car, and I put my lights on. Not a career decision, you might do the same thing, but <laughs> have you seen people that don't put their lights on? They put the little parking lights on? <laughs> Who are these people? <laughs> like, why are they in the car like 20 minutes later having a group discussion? You think it's time for full power now? <laughs> Come on, let's put all the lights on, woo! I swear, these are the same dickweeds that are carrying those things. Can you say dickweed? Yes, you can. But they're the same people. 
there they're carrying those beepers, beeper people, beeper people. I don't know where they're multiplying. They're driving me crazy. I don't know. I'm serious. So the people, on, people at home don't know there's about 40 people in here with these. That's what it is. But I don't know. Five years ago, a guy with the beeper, oh, he was a doctor. He was on call. Now every idiot has one. You know these people? And, you know, I don't understand. Some of them, you go, you look at them and go, who would call him? How much of an emergency could it be? I'll meet him at the dumpster later in the day. I was working the other night. A guy in the audience said a beeper. Hey, this guy, he was you know, well-dressed. He had pants. And I said, are you, are you a doctor? He said, no. I said, what's your job? He said, he was a vending machine attendant. I went, holy moly. I don't know how many times I've woken up at three in the morning and said, I need a Snickers. Who can I call? <laughs> Thank God you're in the room. I don't know. But why bother with that? But I really think that... No, just a number of things I've been aggravating. I mentioned the food thing, and I don't know. See, the thing is, I'm, I love food. I, I don't know if you can tell from there, but uh, you know, I eat almost every day. And they say there are five basic food groups. There are two. You know, there's the stuff that's moving and the stuff that's ready. That's all there is, you know. But the thing is, the diet shows on TV, I try to lose weight. I watch these. They're 30 minutes in length. You're like me. You can get a six-pack and a pizza down while you're watching. It's not helping, right? 20-minute workout. Now, there's one I do watch. And anybody who hasn't seen that, especially a guy, take the day off because... Uh, how can I describe it on TV? It's a, uh, it's a porno show, okay? And uh, three gorgeous women, they have one bathing suit. They give it back and forth right on camera. I'm watching the other day, there's a woman sitting on a stool. She had her knees behind her head. I do it for her, but we don't have time. But I'm watching this, right? And I have no idea how the knees got there. She says, are you working out with me at home? I'm going, yeah, in my own way. Thank you very much. And I, and I don't know. And I'm losing weight, but it's not enough. But I think... I think the food thing, you know, and it is funny because I come from a big family and when you used to eat at home, I mean, it, it, was very, it was very, very weird, the type of foods that you ate and stuff. We came from a family that would appoint certain foods to be a favorite. Like my parents thought that I liked beets. Beets, I'm an adult right now, I can say that they suck. And uh, I don't know, beets, I mean, if you put them on a plate by themselves, they're bad enough, but then they stain the good food. Have you noticed that? <laughs> and as a kid, you can make a wall with mashed potatoes to keep that stuff out, but now you look like an idiot. And I don't know. But the food, that I think the worst part of the food, the whole situation of food is some of the stuff that we ate as kids. And I don't understand that. I mean, I don't know how we're all living. Everybody in the room, we ate the candy that came on strips of paper, the tiny little dots. Remember that? Wasn't that tasty, huh? You ate about half the paper that it came on. I have the equivalent of a sequoia tree in my body from eating this. Then there were the wax milk bottles. Remember those? You bite the end off, drink the swamp water, right? And then the wax lips, those are fun for eight, maybe 10 minutes, then you throw them away. And think about it, you didn't throw them away. You didn't throw away the wax milk bottles, you ate the wax. Everybody in the room is a former wax eater, I know this. It's like going up to someone in someone's house right now and saying, give me a candle, I just want one, maybe two bites, that's all I need. Hey, thanks a lot, appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. How you going, buddy? Good set, man. Here you go, put that baby right on. It's Don Gavin, ladies and gentlemen. You can see him over at uh, Fabulous Nick's Comedy Stop every uh, Friday night. Is that right, Don? That's correct. Yeah, I do a lot of TV. I don't know if you can pick up on it. But no, that's all right. But basically, uh, the cable comedy show, we have the thousands of dollars worth of equipment, so we can't afford a boom mic. We have, like, women to do this. Well, we always... Uh, Try and give the oldest guy on the show the clip thing to Why do. Why was that? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> you got Kevin Meany just walked in the room oh, yeah. in the back. Yeah. Just to help oh, uh, you your shows on Saturday. Okay, Joe, you're finishing. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> I don't mean like permanently, but I mean for the evening. All right. My hair look all right, man? You look wonderful you. on television. Thank you. In thank person, you, you look like shit, stuff. but... Yeah, uh, well, okay. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Now, you got two kids, right? Yeah, they, look, like kids, they look good. They're, uh, my ki actually, my daughter, what, she's seven now. My son, Christopher, daughter, Suzanne's seven. My son, Christopher, is 41. And uh, <laughs> he's, he's, they're in the second grade, you know. And uh, kind of, I don't know, he's kind a of an awkward slow, age. Is that the but he's not a little slow. No, no, he stopped. As a matter of fact, you know, yeah, he's permanently in one position. You know. No, they're good, actually. Christopher's 11, my son's, my, just that's my son, of course, and yeah, my daughter's 14. Yeah, it's novel how you name the boy. Yeah, that's a lot name. of times you want to come up with that. Yeah, yeah. like name like yeah. that. We're going to have both Suzanne's, but, uh, you know, he, was, he, he didn't really care about it, but she was upset, so that's it's how like we your did brother it. and your other brother, Daryl. Yeah, you uh, got it. So you live in Situate, right? Yeah, by the water. Right. How come we haven't had a clam bake down there this year? Well, I, mostly my friends go down there. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, of course, some of these people have been here. There's half of them have been down there. Right. Yeah. 
Well, I noticed you, you got a magnificent tan because yeah. of the uh, well, I'm Irish. living right on the beach. I'm Irish. I'm Irish. I'm Irish. You know, the, you know, I look like a milk bottle with arms, basically. You know, and uh, <laughs> I go on the beach like little kids throw stuff at me and stuff. You know, I, honestly, this happened. A, ref, a life guy I was going to say a ref guy, but they don't have those. But a life guy <laughs> came up. But I was thinking about a boxing thing we had done earlier. But uh, a life guy came up and said, uh, so "My name is my name is Rex. I'm the life guy." I said, "Good, I'll." I'll call you when I need you, I guess. I don't know. And he, he's showing me how to put tanning lotion. I said, I come from a planet with the sun. I know about some of this stuff, you know. But the beach is there. We've had, this year, we've had, what, five good days, which I think is a record. And, and but it doesn't, no one goes in the water anyways. Around. You play Frisbee on the beach. If it goes in, you say, screw it. We'll buy a new one, you know. Uh, the water's, what, 11 degrees around here. I mean, women go in. They look good. Guys go in. You get to a certain height. There's a problem there. Have you noticed that? It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the beach stuff. Now, that what else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what are you driving nowadays? You're famous for having like 12 cars a year. Yeah, pretty they much don't... a high bargain I'm driving now, but I have, I have, uh, <laughs> last year, see, I'm not a good driver, and people in Massachusetts, we're, 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 most of us are bad. Last year, I was in, uh, I was in 11 accidents, and uh, I came in fifth in the state, I don't know if that's good or bad, whatever, but, and I don't, I, I don't cause, no, I'm serious, people at home, you know, tell, I don't cause, yeah, I, I did, I caused one, I, I hit, this kind of guy, I hit a guy, he was in his uh, living room. And uh, I couldn't see him from the street, you know, so I don't think it was my fault. And he went behind a couch. I got him, you know, but uh, had to go through the kitchen, make a quick turn there, you know. Yeah, but so they have a, it's, I don't know if it's a car, actually, now. It's, uh, What'd it's, it cost you? Uh, well, if I had bought it, it would have been, uh, I don't know. It was kind of like on the street, and no one was actually near it, so I thought we got just get, why are you asking me these things on TV? This is kind of a fun story, but that's all right. No, actually, uh, you had a car. As a matter of fact, your car was stolen, too. You had some difficulties with that. Yeah, my I like to bring was, up the humorous stuff. My from car was stolen <laughs> after filming a cable comedy show, as a matter of fact. So and, I guess uh, I can things a little Well, needless to say, huh? luckily with the, uh, the Brookline Cablevision insurance, I was covered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that your bike out front now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's a, about the size of a can opener at this point. Not looking too good. But uh, you going on the road soon? You going anywhere soon? Yeah, I'm going to Lowell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it comes through, we're, we're, we're dickering. That's uh -huh. a, we can say dicker, can't we? Yeah, Absolutely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went low. with Dickamundo a little bit no, earlier. I don't no, think we... No, no. We I, was, I went to Florida. You've worked in Florida, too. Yeah. But anybody at Florida, I was down there, and I, I well, honestly, I didn't know what old was. My parents are reasonably elderly. They'll be watching this if, we, if I buy them that TV. But uh, <laughs> so, Because I know a lot of people do see this, eight, even ten families sometimes. And uh, so... No, I don't get it in Situate. I don't get anything there. But they live in uh, uh, Norwood. Is, I knew that's where it was out that way. But anyway, so uh, we were talking about them in Florida. They're kind of old, but they're nice. And, but in Florida, the people, there were people driving down there in their, in their late hundreds. I, I know this is a fact. You know, I mean, they don't even have their arm out the window. There's a bone sticking out, you know, dirt marks on them. But why do we get on the elderly? Okay, good. 